Nearly a decade ago, one image shocked the nation, the world, the beheading of American journalist James Foley. Now, the terrorist group ISIS operating in Syria carried out Foley's killing on camera in what they called a message to America. It's certainly traumatizing. Yeah. But now, it is Foley's mother, Diane, who has a message of her own. In a new book called American Mother, she writes about meeting and confronting one of her son's killers who is now behind bars. Wow, national correspondent Maya Rodriguez sat down one on one with her to talk about James Foley's, uh, what she learned, the mother, from that experience. Maya, what did she say that she really took away from meeting with her son's killer? Yeah, well, you know, Lauren and Carolyn, one of the things she said was that it was quite healing for her. You know, Diane Foley turned her devastating loss into action. She created the James Foley Foundation, which advocates for Americans held hostage overseas. Her new book, though, focuses not just on the son she lost, but also what she gained in an unusual set of conversations with one of his killers. Within the pages of American Mother, it's this mother, Diane Foley, whose voice bursts really from the awesome. page. I really wanted to do a book so that people might understand what we went through and the challenge our country faces. The story begins in 2012. Foley's oldest son, James, nicknamed Jim, heads off to Syria as a freelance journalist to cover the ongoing civil war there. He is kidnapped, held, and tortured for two years by several British members of ISIS, who later beheaded Jim on camera. This is how Diane Foley found out what happened to him. I looked at Twitter and there was the horrific image of um, Jim's head on his back. I mean, it was just shocking. The shock of the cruelty spread across the nation and world. Eventually, Jim's killers were tracked down. One killed by a U.S. drone strike, the other two captured by Kurdish militia forces in northern Syria taken into custody and extradited to the U.S. for trial. One of them was this man, Alexander Cody. Why did you decide to go meet with him? Alexander chose to plead guilty to all eight counts, pleaded guilty to everything, and he offered to meet with victims. And I knew Jim would have met him and wanted to hear his side of the story. Over the course of three meetings, Foley met with her son's killer inside a windowless room in a Virginia courtroom. What was that like? It was awkward. It was awkward for him and for me. But in time, it was kind of odd. The, the rest of the people kind of melted away. And then we were able to hear each other. Did he apologize? Well, he expressed remorse. He apologized for the suffering I had undergone and our family. He really didn't apologize for what he did to Jim. He saw that as separate and kind of part of their war, their vendetta against the West. But um, he wrote me several letters after that, and they all were filled with a similar remorse. So there was a part of it, Maya, that was... I think healing on both sides. One of those letters he wrote to Foley is reproduced in the book. Careful, looping script from the person who took so much from her. How difficult was it to go into that room and, and confront him? It wasn't easy at all, but I just knew Jim would have done the same thing. And so uh, Jim, right along since he was killed, has challenged me to try to be a better person, a bigger person. With God's help and Colin's um, generous offer to accompany me, um, I was able to go. Colm is the book's co-author, Colm McCann. And it was one of the most extraordinary uh, moments of my life. He accompanied Foley during the courthouse conversations with Cody. She's extraordinary, but she's also ordinary. Diane is a nurse practitioner. She lived in a suburban house in New Hampshire. Her son went away and her son didn't come back, but she decided uh, out of all of that, she would change the way that other sons and daughters would come back. That to me is a powerful, powerful story. And it's the divides that Foley says she yeah, wants no, to bridge. One of the reasons she's telling her story, Jim's story, in full now. What do you hope people take away after they read this book? I hope we inspire people. These, these are kind of dark times in some ways, right? And I think Jim's horrific murder was kind of a, just a, a symbol of that hatred and uh, looming hatred. So we really need to 
start building those bridges again before it's too late. Something Foley herself is trying to do by turning one page at a time. Jim Foley's death and that of several other American hostages around the same time spurred the federal government to create a new position, a special presidential envoy who would handle cases of Americans held hostage overseas. That point person didn't exist when Jim was kidnapped, but now it does, something Diane Foley also sees as part of her son's legacy.